Good morning, it's Como New Life Church. Today is Friday, May 20th, and we are on the last day of this Bible reading plan, Knowing and Enjoying God. And I hope you've learned uh, something good. I hope you've enjoyed learning and being affirmed about what it means uh, to not only know God, but to know more of Him and to enjoy the relationship that we have uh, in uh in Christ Jesus, all right? And so this morning, uh, we are tasked, we are responsible with looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at that together. And would you listen to what Paul addresses to the church of Thessalonica? All right, this is chapter 5, verse 14. And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. Amen. You know, it, it seems like such an odd passage to use if you're trying to stir up people to know God and to enjoy Him. It, Right? Like, doesn't that seem a little weird, right? It, it, it doesn't seem like it is the ideal passage uh, to use as a motivation to know God and to enjoy Him. But I think there is a rhyme to this reason. You see, in our devotional reading this morning, we are greeted with a quote from Matthew Henry uh, that says, when we are out of the way of duty, we are in the way of temptation, right? When we are out of the way of duty, we are in the way of temptation. And so staying busy and active is important, right? Upholding our Christian duties and responsibilities are of importance. But how does that lead us to into a place where we know God and enjoy Him, right? If we're trying to align this with the theme of our Bible reading plan. Like how, how does that translate into us knowing God and enjoying Him? You know, our author believes that being idle sets us up to be vulnerable and susceptible to Satan's lure and temptation. Uh, the great Charles Spurgeon would even go as far as saying, idle people tempt the devil to tempt them. In other words, when we're idle, not doing anything, we are saying essentially to the Satan, like, hey, can you tempt me? I'm a little bored over here. You see, it's it's true, right? And the devil is most active when we are unmotivated, when we are uh, bored, lazy, and idle. And I think I find it to be especially true when we are being lazy about the things that help us grow up and mature in the gospel, right? It's usually when we neglect those things that we find ourselves getting into trouble. And so, being active helps us keep in step with the Spirit and the things that God is doing. Right? It keeps us in, in a rhythm of taking what we already know about God, what we've experienced, and use that to live for Him and for His kingdom. And so if we take that mentality and consider it in light of this morning's scripture, then I believe the way we can take 1 Thessalonians as a means for knowing God and enjoying Him is the hands-on experience we will gain by urging our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ by admonishing the idol as we stir them up with grace and love, by encouraging those who are faint-hearted with listening, with counseling, using the Word of God, reminding them, uh, you know, praying for them, and so forth. Right? It'll be through the helping of others, especially the weak, and being patient with all, right, with all that will better apply the Word of God in our lives. Right? It'll add perspective that that hands-on experience is something that you cannot replicate and in my experience it's one thing to know the word of god and it's another to experience him doing his works it's one thing to like study your bible and to know what that means but to actually have to apply it in our living is a whole different level of, of, of life lesson right it's you know there's something uh special something irreplaceable when we are serving and being attentive to the needs of others you know like I'll be honest with you, it's hard to explain. But if you've ever experienced it, you know exactly what I mean. And so, for example, I don't know, like going on a mission trip. Maybe you've gone on a mission trip or maybe you've served the needs of a, a downtown mission or a rescue mission, right? Um, going on a mission trip, that's, that's tough, right? Being around broken people is tough. It's draining. But the feeling that you leave... Like the, that feeling that you leave with feels different, yet wholesome. 
Right? You leave knowing it was well worth it. or And you feel as if you know God more. Like I don't know anybody who does the service for the Lord and leaves regretting it. Right? Rarely does somebody feel that unless their heart's really in the wrong place. But the majority of time when you are doing something for the Lord, it feels rewarding in your heart and your soul, despite how tiring it has been. And, and I, I, I feel like that adds perspective to really your relationship, where you stand before God and the way that you understand His Word. Or, or think about having, a, I don't know, maybe in a different situation, think about having a heart-to-heart with a fellow brother or sister in Christ. And you're, you're sharing with each other your life struggles. Uh, you know, maybe there's some tears. Uh, maybe the things that you hear makes your, your heart heavy. Uh, and, you know, because of the burden you feel, because, you know, someone that you know is going through such a, a hard time or has has such a, like a dramatic experience in their life. But there's something about being able to share that moment and walk in life with them. Right, that somehow... Your heart's just drawing near to God. like In that you realize your need for God or for God's help, for God's counsel, for God's grace. Or the things that you've learned about God, you you see how that plays into their life and so forth. And and you want to pray for them. And you want to encourage them. Right? Do you see how that works? Like There's something about being active with our faith and walking in life with others that makes God more enjoyable. Or stirs up a hunger or desperation within us to know Him more. You see, it's when we are actively living a life that reflects the faith that we have. That actually allows us to step into life experiences. And and add perspective to knowing God and our ability to enjoy Him. Or our ability to enjoy knowing Him. Being loved by Him. And living for Him. if If we are actively living a life that reflects the faith that we have in Jesus then doing the things that are listed in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14, well, those things, I believe, uh, become not only natural, but we are more intentional about that because we will be loving others as Christ has loved us. And so church, if there's a takeaway for you this morning, uh, it should be this. Let's not be idle. Right? Let's not be idle. Let's not become lazy. Let's not become discouraged. Let's not become dis- complacent. But let us be active in our faith. And as we are being active in our faith, as we are loving others, would that allow us to know God, to know Him more, and enjoy Him, and enjoy being in the relationship that we are in with Him as we continue to walk this life. And so church, uh, today is Friday. Uh, That means the Lord's Day is just around the corner. I cannot wait to worship with all of you this coming Lord's Day. And so until then, I pray that the Lord will bless you. Would He keep you? And until next time, or until Sunday, the Lord's Day, may you go in peace. Amen and amen.